Hey class, Professor Deborah Oakley here with another video on rotational equilibrium and the use in figuring out forces inside of a truss structure. This one has a little bit more complicated loadings as you can see here. Um, it's a little bit longer and it has a uh, fork hip horizontal force. Ultimately it doesn't really change anything. We're still talking about rotational equilibrium. So let's analyze this one. First thing we want to do here is find the reactions. I'm going to do this two ways. One is, of course, with summing moments because we have our situation here. We have um, a pin support here and a roller support over here. The roller support can only hold forces perpendicular to its surface. The pin support, therefore, has to carry this fork hip horizontal force. So the left reaction is four kips. And that's simply a trivial calculation of sum of forces horizontally equal to zero, saying that four kips minus R left horizontal is zero, therefore R left is four kips. That's the only place that that can go. Can't go up here, there's nothing up there, it's up in the air. So now we have to sum moments to find our reactions. So I'm going to sum moments about the left hand end equal to zero clockwise will be positive in this calculation. Now we need distances here. I'm just going to draw partial arrows so the double arrows are just indicating that it I'm measuring all the way to the end. So this 10 kip is at 10 feet, 10, 20, 30 feet. 20 feet here, 10 feet here. So my left end is the moment center. I'm searching for our right. So that leaves me with four kips at five feet. So it's moment arm is five feet relative to the left hand end here, and then minus 10 kips at 10 feet. This is a negative sign because relative to this point, oh, I'm sorry, it's positive. I'm looking at that 10 up there. It's positive 10 kips at 10 feet, plus 10 kips at 20 feet, plus 10 kips at 30 feet. Now minus r right at 40 feet. And that all has to equal to zero. I'm pretty sure that my right hand reaction is up because the majority of my load is down, so I have to have two upward reactions. So therefore, our right is going to be 10 times 10, that's 100, plus 200, plus 300, plus this 20 over here. I wanted to put the main loads first. And then that's divided by 40 feet. So that's 200, 300, 600, and 20 kip feet divided by 40 feet. shade. How about that? 620, 40, divine, 15.5 kips. Now I could use vertical equilibrium since I only have one unknown reaction over here, my R left vertical, but if I've made a mistake in this calculation somewhere, then I'll have a mistake over here. So for beginning students, I strongly recommend that you do moment sum on the opposite side. So I'm going to sum moments about the right hand side. I'm 
And I'll again call clockwise positive. I typically do that for convenience. Now, the measurements here are all the same. This is 10, 20, 30. Of course, they're in reverse order, but they're all 10 kips, so it's the same. And 4 kips is at 5 feet, but we'll see that rotational action is in the opposite direction. So this is 10 kips times 10 feet. Now, relative to this point, this one wants to rotate counterclockwise. I've called clockwise positive, so that's a negative. And that's true for all of these 10 kip forces. Now the 4 kips, though, relative to this point, its line of action is going here. So it would tend to go clockwise, so it's a positive number and it has a moment arm of 5 feet. And then our left vertical at 40 feet and it lost equal to 0. So our left then is again 100 kip feet, 200 kip feet, And these, yeah. And then minus, as we switch this all around, you can check the math yourself there. 20 kip feet divided by 40 feet. So that's again 600, but minus 20. So 580 kip feet divided by 40 feet. Fourteen point five. So that's the first step in all of this. We want to find our reactions. Now let's double check that we have the correct answer for the reactions by summing forces vertically. So the only forces that we have acting vertically are the three loads right here plus the two reactions. So I've got minus 10 kips, three of those, plus 14.5 kips, plus 15.5 kips. Does that equal to zero? Well, that's negative 30 plus 30. So that checks. That means that my reaction calculation is, in fact, correct. Now let me show you a second way of assessing the reactions that can sometimes be helpful in situations like this. Once you understand that fully, we can do a slightly short, more shortcut here. If we consider the truss separately from the vertical and horizontal forces. In this case, we have three 10 kip forces. Well, that's easy to see that if I have a total load of 50, uh, 30 kips, half goes to each side, I would have to have 15 kips here and 15 kips here to balance 10 kips, 10 kips, and 10 kips. 15 and 15 is 30. Now, how does this 4-kip force come into play? Well, if I were to look at this just as an equilibrium condition of the structure with only that load on it, 4 kips, it's 5 feet up, and it's 40 feet long. What then happens is that I develop a rotational couple. I get a upward force here and a downward force here because if I pick one of these to be a moment center, let's take the left hand end, the 4 kip causing rotation this way 
therefore I have to have an upward rotation that way. So if I sum moments about the left hand end equal to zero, I've got four kips at five feet call clockwise positive minus our right at 40 feet our right is 20 kip feet divided by 40 feet that cancels equals 0 0.5 kips and since there are no other vertical forces acting I can some moments about here to verify this but I can also see by inspection that our right is 0 0.5 kips our left is negative 0 0.5 kips so these then add because we're superimposing forces onto the same location so this this is an important concept that you can take moments and add them from different loads as long as you're summing moments about the same point so I've got 15 kips over here I'm going to add 0 0.5 kips 15.5 kips and then over here I've got negative 0 0.5 kips so I'm subtracting that and I get a net of 14.5 kips and that's exactly what we got before so this is an alternate method but don't use this alternate method until you fully understand how to do a basic reaction calculation.